Hi. In a previous video in this series, we've talked about bulk labeling. And in this video, I would like to highlight that we've made a modest improvement to the technique. We still take text, pass that through a language backend to generate embeddings, and we also still use a technique like UMAP to reduce that down to a two-dimensional plane. We still take these two-dimensional representations and allow you to draw such that you might be able to label, but what we've now also done is we've added more user interface elements using IPython widgets, such that we are more flexible inside of a Jupyter Notebook. By and large, the labeling technique is still the same. We're still able to select a region, which will select a cluster of points, but now we can click this button over here to get some of the examples shown here. Every time we click this button, we get a new random subset from this cluster, and this will make it easier for us to confirm what is actually in here. We can now go down, specify the name for this label. We can add the label. And we now also see over here how much labels we still have left. Another thing we can do now is we can say, well, these labels are selected, so let's redraw the entire chart such that we can focus on all the points that haven't been labeled yet. This will make it easier to zoom in on the harder clusters. There is another thing that we can do too now. You see, you can imagine that after you've been labeling and you've been dealing with the low-hanging fruit first, that maybe this big cluster over here deserves some more separation. And to do that, you can click this Retrain button. What it will do is it won't retrain the embeddings because that won't change much, but we can say, well, let's run UMAP once more, but now only on the points that haven't been labeled yet. Doing this might take a small while, but it will give you a new view over here. Let's click it again. And you'll notice every time that we run this, the clusters are sorted in a slightly different way, which again might help us do our labeling. Now I hope that you appreciate the extra user interface elements that we've attached here, and that this might help you label your own data when you're starting out. Also note that it's completely up to you what language model you pick, so that means that you're also totally free to use a non-English language model that you found on the internet. The notebook that you see here is self-contained, and if you want to go ahead and play with it, you can find the link in the show notes so you can get started right away.